Hello and welcome to the E. Partshala course on Intellectual Property Rights. I am Yogesh Pai, Assistant Professor of Law at National Law University, Delhi. Today we are going to discuss a module on other forms of intellectual property rights. Previously in various modules we have discussed separate categories of intellectual property rights involving trademarks, trade secrets, patents, copyrights, industrial designs, geographical indications, plant variety protection and the like. Today we are going to discuss some of the remaining categories of intellectual property rights which either have legal basis or statutory basis in India's IP regime or have been formulated through various judicial opinions or some of the forms that we are going to discuss today are yet emerging or are been made as or are been demanded by the demand yours in relation to intellectual property. The learning objectives of this module are to understand how new and emerging forms of IP or other complementary rights that complement with IP are changing the emerging landscape of global IP protection and in India. To also examine the legal and conceptual basis for such regimes, to locate these new forms of intellectual property in the context of India's IP regime and to understand the common policy implications of having such additional regimes. The first we are going to discuss is the Semiconductor Integrated Circuits and Layout Designs Act. What is a semiconductor chip? If you look into any digital equipment, it is powered by any uh, some kind of a semiconductor chip. So, the chip act defines semiconductor in technical terms to include these chips. Chips have a unique functionality wherein there are layers and layers of fabricated material and designs embedded in them which have transistors and nodes and they act in binary as ands and nodes. Now, to protect such layout designs, you need some specific intellectual property protection. You can think by way of patents or existing forms of industrial designs or copyright, but these have largely presumed or are in fact not protective or either over protective of semiconductor chip designs. Chip layouts in layers, you know they have three dimensional uh, properties they are three dimensional in character, they are spatial representation and hence it is difficult to get them in current forms of uh, IP protection. There are certain developments in the United States, Japan and EU in the context of uh, semiconductor chip protection. In fact, United States was one of, the, one of the first countries to have the SCPA that is the Semiconductor Chip Protection Act in 1984 and this was because US industries, semiconductor chip industries were realizing that the existing forms of IP protection were not amenable to protect or not designed to protect semiconductor chips and hence they needed a sui generis form of legislation. They also knew that if such regimes were not evolved then countries like Japan which were competing with American companies would lead the way in semiconductor chip protection and hence they thought that it would be important to come out with a sui generis form of legislation. But in India, semiconductor chip protection is widely unused. The first registration in this under this act was done only in 2014 October. It means there is, there is no semiconductor chip industry in India that needs such kind of a protection and yet we have this in the form of a domestic law. One of the reasons why we have it as a domestic law is because there is a clear cut mandate in the TRIPS agreement which requires that countries all WTO members should have such a form of legislation. But why sui generis for semiconductor chips? The copyright regime seems unsuitable. The standard of originality that you require for copyright law is distinct from the standard of originality that you require in case of semiconductor chip where the originality standard is a combination of known designs. The protection period is seemingly high in case of uh, uh, copyright which is life plus 60 years, but the protection required for semiconductor chip is largely low because they have low shelf life. Unauthorized duplication of the chip is largely not uh, protected uh, and there also exists idean expression dichotomy in case of copyright which uh, can hamper protection in case of semiconductor chip design. Patent law is also not very suitable because the high standard of inventive step cannot be achieved by minor changes in the functional aspects of uh, transistors and circuitry elements in the, the semiconductor chip because these are placed in a known way and they are a known combination 
of uh, uh, designs. The layout is a special organization which performs a function and such spatial organization or presentation has been expressly prohibited under the patents law because presentation of information have classically not been protected through patent law, but have been protected through other forms of intellectual property like the copyright regime. And what is important to understand although this semiconductor chip performs a function since they are spatial organization or spatial representation of designs they need a distinct form of protection which is not afforded by patent law. Design law or industrial designs law also seems to be largely unsuitable because the industrial designs act provides for protection of those designs that appeal when judged solely by eye appeal to your eyes. But semiconductor chips do not contain any such appearance they are largely functional in nature and functional designs are excluded by the designs law and hence there is a need for, for a sui generis regime. Section 7 of the semiconductor chip act in India looks into the condition of registration and it mentions that a layout design shall not be registered if it is not original which means it should not be a commonplace design however a combination of designs is allowed. These should not be commercially exploited which is not inherently distinctive. However, in case of commercial exploitation you can have few years of commercial exploitation and then subsequently register under the act which is not available in case of other regimes. For example, in patent law you need to go first and file for a patent in case of a semiconductor chip you can commercially exploit and then uh, actually file for an application. In case of semiconductor chips the requirement is also that these designs which are not inherently distinctive shall not be registered. The require this is required only in the Indian act, but there is no mention of such a uh, requirement in either the TRIPS agreement or the IPIC treaty which is an international treaty for semiconductor chips. Now such designs which are also not capable of being distinguishable from any other reg registered layout design is also not registered under the act. The protection period under the act is for 10 years. What is specifically important that in the context of infringement reverse engineering is a basic exception that is provided under the law. If you look into section 18.3 and 18.4 they, de they have detailed provisions relating to reverse engineering and why is reverse engineering needed in this area because of the very way in which the industry functions and the technology moves. There is a need for interoperability and largely these are a combination of known designs. So, let us look into one of the cases wherein the argument of reverse engineering or the defense of reverse engineering was articulated. In Brook Tree versus Advanced Micro Devices is an American decision of the federal circuit. Here they came to a conclusion the court came to a conclusion that paper trail was not enough to show that there was no infringement even while it might show evidence of reverse engineering trails. So, what this means is that the fact that you have maintained a paper trail during the trials that you do during reverse engineering is not sufficient to establish a fact that there was no infringement. Infringement must be judged also in the context of facts of whether there was actual copying. Failures in independent invention can also lead to infringement which is akin to the patent protection wherein failures in independent invention can definitely lead to infringement of a patent. The so, similar logic is also applied in case of semiconductor chip protection act. Another form of uh, intellectual property which is not discussed so much in Indian context is unfair competition. But interestingly there are several statutory provisions in international regimes and also judicial cases that have evolved. International legal framework for unfair competition is laid down in the Paris convention for protection of industrial property in 1883 and this was also revised recently by the Stockholm um, as recently as 1967 and also is now part of TRIPS mutatis mutandis. Article 2 of the Paris convention defines industrial property in the broadest terms possible and it includes the repression of unfair competition. But what is unfair competition is not properly defined. 
Article 10 bis of the Paris Convention, which contains a non exhaustive list of, list of contraventions of honest practices in industrial and commercial matters against all of which member states are required to provide effective protection. So, that is the mandate. TRIPS extends this logic of protection to GIs under Article 22.2b and also under Article 39 in relation to protection of undisclosed information as a species of unfair competition. What is interesting to know is that although unfair competition principles have been specifically laid down, still there is no clear cut idea among WTO member jurisdictions as to what exactly constitutes unfair competition and whether there is a clear cut mandate to be protected in several other areas where TRIPS or Paris convention has not specifically mentioned it. 